Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 6 of Spyro, Year of the Dragon, part of the Reignited Trilogy. Today we'll be doing Icy Peak, the first level of Midday Gardens. Technically, um, Sergeant Bird's level is the last outside of um, like the basic levels, but we needed to complete other levels, so we did it. So yeah, last episode, if you guys didn't watch it, we did Sergeant Bird's base, we did Crawdad Farm, and we finished off Molten Crater, and... Now we're back to 100%, and yeah, Sparks can now pick up gems further away, despite not being able to pick up half the gems. Yeah, that's that's great. So yeah, the gimmick here is a lot of weird ice that doesn't look like it'd be slippery, and cannons, and polar bears, named Bob and Doug. Uh, I was supposed to meet Doug to go ice fishing today, but Rhinox have blocked the path with ice, so I can't get through. Well, I've been trying to clear the way with this cannon, but it doesn't even shoot straight. I haven't been able to hit a dang thing all morning. Why does every creature in Avalar and the Dragon Worlds have cannons? Like, is that like a necessity in the in these worlds to just randomly have cannons? Yeah, if you want the achievement in this level, by the way, it's to kill all the birds. Which you're not going to be able to right away anyway. Plus, I don't... Oh, I know, I guess you can't hop up here. I always thought like you couldn't. Like when I would replay, and remember these levels all have 500 gems. So the fact that we only have 23 in this first little area is actually pretty low, considering the new gem totals for levels being a whole hundred above. And these guys shoot snowballs, and if you're wondering if they shot bullets or something in the original, no, they always shot uh, um, snowballs. I don't know why the original game had bullets though, unless they technically weren't bullets. But Spyro 2 and 3 were a lot more family friendly in what kind of like ways they attacked you with. But a lot of the enemies are just downright creepier in these games than they were in like Spyro 1. Once again, another gem that Sparks refused to pick up from a decent range. I think these are rats. Okay, that one. Wait, what? Um, I'm glitched. Okay, that was weird. I couldn't jump. I was walking like I wasn't on ice, but... Okay. So you may have seen the crack in the ice. Well, you technically do have to head bash it and dive into this nice icy cold water. With really weird sand underneath. I don't know what's up with the sand, but it just looks weird. And all this is for is just a bunch of random gems under the ice. Kind of a weird thing they did, but kind of cool. Like it. It adds a little bit of taste to the game, like, you know, you're not always doing the exact same thing. Because you rarely use that head bash ability in Spyro, like, even in Spyro th or, uh, 2 when you unlocked it, you barely used it. And then remember in Enter the Dragonfly, how you just never used it? You, you had it in the game and used it, I think, in one level. Just like the Wing Shield only worked in one level. Wing Shield also, mind you, didn't really do anything in uh, A Hero's Tale either, but... That's beyond the point. We'll just ignore the fact that half the abilities in Spyro are never actually utilized. Alright. Let's pull open this ice door here, kill this tubby man that you guys didn't even see yet, but I knew he was there. Or, I mean, no, I think the achievement's not the birds. I think it's just destroys a certain amount of, like, ice blocks with this. Okay, there is a bird over there that we can kill. Okay, we killed him. Are there any more, though? I don't think there's more birds in this section, so go and grab all this money over here. I'm not gonna say cash money again, so don't worry. Alright, shoot your snowballs. Essentially, they're a weaker version of the enemies that were found in uh, Twilight Harbor back in Spiral 1. Once again, Sparks can't pick up that green gem. It's always the green gems, too. I don't know what they did to the green gems in this game. But they really made it so Sparks can't pick him up worth a darn at all. Uh-oh. I seen that coming because for whatever reason Sparks swerved to the side. No idea what the heck kind of bird you are, but you're worth health, so... Anything worth health is a friend to me. And we got our first Dragon Egg level, Maynard, from the Candy Factory. Thank you, Maynard. 
I don't need to watch your cutscene because your cutscene is the uh, same. Like, we've already seen every animation and unique little baby dragon and everything. It's just such a disappointment that they didn't do more with the baby dragons, but they sure went all out in Spyro 1. I think what made the game rushed at the end was the fact that they focused on Spyro 1, changing up all the dragons to be super unique and even having new voice lines. And like more dialogue than original, or than originally, but in doing so, they kind of, um, they kind of made it so this game got a lot less attention. Really would have liked if they focused on this game more. But no, of course, this game is the, the rushed one, right? Just like the original was. Can we hit this bird, please? Oh yeah, thank you. I was like wondering if it was even at all possible to hit that darn bird. And there we go. Smoked. Like a cigarette in the night. Anyways, let's go over here to these gems. Alley-oop and smash. That's a pretty hefty chunk of gems. We're about 2400, so we need to get to 20... Uh, 27... 2,900. So we're almost kind of done all the gems, according to this. And once again, half the green gems aren't picked up by sparks. And death. Oh, looks like we got another cannon with some more bird. I was gonna say birds, but then I realized it's like one bird, so is it really birds? Oh, never mind, there's a bird right here. Was a bird right there. You can hear him going, Yum. As if there's some kind of aircraft. Yeah, a lot of this level takes place on the outside of the map. This one, unlike other ones, doesn't have as many, like, big, explorable bonus air or, like, minigame areas, I should say. Not really bonuses, right? And finally, our second egg. It's taking a while to get a lot of our eggs in this level, isn't it? We have Rees. I don't know any Reeses. Can't even be Reese Witherspoon because it's Reese. Anyways, now we can probably go and do the first of the mini games. I don't know what you call them. Challenges, mini games, bonuses. The sound effects on some of these enemies are redonkulous. Yeah, and by the way, we're going to lose more gems here again. A lot of the levels you can 100% complete, you lose a lot of money. Step right up, Spyro. Behind this door is the single greatest show on Earth. That's right, ice dancing. Season tickets are available, but you'll have to act fast. I always knew you were a cultured sort of dragon. Well, step right in. The show's about to start. Yay, so we essentially make no money from this level. It is a cool level though, or a cool mini game though. I do like this part, it looks pretty. Tonight is my big ice dance performance and these hockey players are ruining it. Every time I start my routine, they come in and smack me with their sticks. Oh, I sure wish I had a partner. Someone courageous, strong, handsome, and purple who breathes Fire. Hmm, that's not specific enough. Will you enough. please help me perform my ice dance? These mean Rhinoc hockey players keep hogging the ice and all I want to do is dance. Thanks, let's go. Okay, Nancy. So what you have to do is you have to wait for these guys to come out of their little... I don't know what you want to call them. Doors. Uh, thingy-majiggers. And then you just have to flame them. You can't charge them, obviously, because you're on ice. Oh, it looks like we got Wayne Gretzky over here. Sidney Crosby. Uh, I don't know any more hockey players. I don't like hockey. Despite being Canadian, I'm not a huge hockey fan. Funny, right? I don't live up to the stereotypes. But I believe that's... Okay, no. You're the last one, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and that should be it. Right? That's it, Nancy. 
Yay! <laughs> she looks like she's just those remodeled um, dudes from like Idle Springs and stuff. We did it! That was my best performance ever. I guess one of the judges didn't like it though. He threw this egg at me instead of a rose. Why don't you have it? They tried to do the 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 phony baloney Newfoundland Canadian accent, but they didn't do very well in this game. Kearney. Nerdy. His name is Nerdy. Maybe you can be my ice dancing partner in the next Olympics. Uh, Spyro at the Winter Olympics. Spyro versus or Mario versus Spyro at the 2024 Olympics. I don't know. I have to hurry in myself. I'm one of the judges for tonight's performance. For some reason, that's one of the only dialogues that you can, like, re-listen to that auto-triggers, and I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, I guess we'll go down here. I guess before we go in there, we want to make sure we have all the gems up here, because we want that to be the last spot we get all the gems in. So just in case there are more gems over here or anything, I don't think so. Yeah. No. So it looks like we should be able to finish the level if we go down here. We're only going to be missing one egg. And for some reason, they don't actually tell you what you need to do. But you have to deal with two thieves in here. Really weird for this level to be focused around thieves as much as it is. But there we go. We got Betty LaBoop. Or Betty La Bomba from uh, Paladins again. Yeah, and see now the red one pops up down there. And he'll be a little more of a pain in the butt to get, because he is way faster. And I honestly forget which way. Oh, we went the wrong way, didn't we? Yeah, we went the wrong way. Of course we did. Like I said, I always forget which way this darn guy goes. There he is. And there is a skill point in here that we can get, because the, the skill point is actually in this part of the level. Oh, thank god. Scout! From the scouts, obviously. Okay, he has a unique animation. We'll, we'll give you that, little buddy. And we're at 50 eggs and we'll be at 51. I think after this level we'll do the speedway and then call it an episode. Because the other levels are pretty long in this world. Well, not necessarily long, but they have long sections. Oh my god, I hate this so much. Like... Where in this game, it, you can't just go sideways to get that, you know? Now I gotta remember exactly where the last section we need to go is. Okay, it wasn't this one. I'm pretty sure it's this way, right? Or maybe not. Oh, I guess, I guess technically I was sort of right. It was right here. But yeah, I have to go down this... It kind of reminds me of Autumn Plains a little bit, you know? With, like, the, uh, the whole... Little secret hideaway that has the gems, and there should be all the gems, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, yeah, it is. There we go. And then, to get to the pedestal, you just have to fly over here. Or I guess glide. You don't really fly your Spyro. I mean, we missed it because perspective. Gotta love when our second death in the entire game is once again just dumb. It wasn't even, you know, dying to an enemy or to a boss or to anything like that. Remember the first death was us getting trapped in the lava and then the second one was that. Just, uh. Also, I don't really care for a lot of this game's, um, like, borders. Like, we're clearly high up in the mountains and all. Which is cool, but at the same time, it's kind of just uh, boring around the area. And there we go, there's the skill point. Now we can go in. What's the next skill point? Chanted Towers, Spooky Swamp, and Frozen Altars. So, most of them are actually in the second half of the game. Because that last one's in the second half of the game, which means in the entire last page of skill points is in the second half of the game. So, we can go talk to... is this Doug? <laughs> I put up ice blocks this morning so Bob wouldn't beat me to the ice fishing hole. If you want to try out the hole, you can borrow this fishing lure I've been using. Don't tell me you've been using Chet, you betcha, as a friggin' fishing lure. 
Ooh, by the way, feel free to use our gondola whenever you want. I miss, first of all, why are polar bears in mountains? Second of all, is the fishing hole that one little ice thing? Because there's literally only one pool of water in this entire level. But thanks, I guess. And we got literally no gems because money bags took them all. Luckily, with the speedway, we can get a nice fat 400 gems for free, no money down. Oh, I thought we had a cutscene for a second there. Oh, we do. Fifo, fifo, fifo. Oh, well, oh, shoot. Fiddly foe, grow! Gubbling, gubblo, goodbye! We should help her. You're kidding, right? She nearly toasted you. Yeah. But she was aiming at you. That's it. Problem. It's a good thing for you, Hunter was around. I can look after myself. Oh, sure you can. <laughs> Would you like me to show you? Uh. Out of magic, huh? How about I give you a jump start? <laughs> I'll deal with you later. <laughs> hey, why'd you have to scare her off? Hmm, so Hunter finally, for the first time ever, wasn't useless. Though he does provide you a lot of orbs and um, uh, dragon eggs throughout the games, but he is kind of useless. Anyways, like I said, we only pretty much have time to do that. This has been a 17 minute episode. Like I said, this game is a lot longer in the sense that the levels actually take longer, because there's more to do, despite not necessarily having more to collect. Any, well, I guess technically they do. So, we're on to Country Speedway, the second of four speedways. My favorite one's actually the third one, but I do like all the speedways in this game. The final one's a little eh. And I don't really care about that because he says the exact same thing in every single game, or in every single course. So now we have to race biplanes, which luckily, for the most part, these ones aren't as smart as the, um, the butterflies. The butterfly one, you cut it a lot closer than you do with, like, these other ones, surprisingly enough. And then we'll use this to slow you down substantially. There we go. It's got the wee, wee, wee in the background. And you can either go for the missile or you can go for the speed boost. I always recommend the speed boost over the missiles, though. Just because the speed boost is super useful. Oh, technically, we could have got a third speed boost there. If you want the achievements, it's either to collect, to shoot so many missiles or go through so many stars in every single speedway. That's it. So, like, they're not really that crazy unique. For whatever reason. Don't know why they didn't make the uh, speedway achievements a little more fun to get. Or trophies, I guess, depending on if you're playing on PlayStation. I originally had this game on PlayStation, and then I had it on Switch because I didn't have my PlayStation anymore. And trust me, the game runs really, really bad on the Switch. The loading times are like quadruple what they were in Spiral 1, and you remember how long those were, right? Yeah, just picture that, but like way longer. And sheesh. You know, if, if they're that bad, then you know how it's going to be for the Switch, right? The Switch is just such a bad gaming platform. Though apparently they are making a Switch 2, or like a, 
a new Nintendo console, hopefully not too expensive, because first of all, still don't have a PlayStation 5, despite them being out for multiple years. Luckily I have the newest Xbox, but not like that means much, because I can't play like Ratchet and Clank or anything, because all these Xbox exclusives are still taking forever to come out. And honestly, I'm not a big fan of a lot of Xbox exclusives. I just prefer the achievement system, the fact that you can earn free money on the Xbox and stuff, stuff that the PlayStation just outright doesn't have, that that the Xbox does have, so that's one thing I like the Xbox more about, or more about the Xbox than the, uh, the PlayStation. The PlayStation does have my favorite exclusives, though despite half those exclusives not even existing anymore, so what's that to say? Anyways, we got first place in 2 minutes and 43 seconds. And our egg is Shemp from Spiral 1, I guess. And now we have the time attack. Oh look, all red rings again. Actually, I think in the original though, they were all red rings. I'm pretty sure that's what they were. Now in this one, you want to go for these sheep riding lawnmowers. I always found the, the speedway enemies to be hilarious, and I wish they were actual enemies. Now what do these guys have on their side? I swear that says... There, it says no to dudes riding raptors. What the heck does that even mean? And they got the biplanes. See, for some reason they chose multicolored biplanes for the uh, race, despite them not being multicolored in the actual like speedway challenge, I guess. This is, would be the speedway challenge right here, right? And there we go, there's all 400 of our gems too. Took 53 seconds to beat. Gavin DeGraw. And we gotta do this again. But this time, we now have to go to this farmhouse over here. Also, how's this country speedway? Like, I guess he has a farm on a lake, right? Whoever the farmer is or she. Spyro! You're not gonna believe this, but there are sheep saucers and space cows all over this place. We gotta stop them before they abduct somebody. I'm sure. gonna strap on my jetpack and blast some space cows. All right, why not? Look out, cows! Here I come! Sure. So, it's one of these ones, kind of like the, um... If you guys remember from Spyro 2, the one where you have to blast the balloons, it's essentially the same thing, except worse. I feel like this one's jankier, and you have to listen to these cowboy guys go yee-haw, like, every five seconds. Yee-haw, baby! Yeah, see, yee-haw. Can I shoot them? No, for some reason you can't shoot things in this game and have funny interactions with them. There we go. I, they, they can't shoot you though, but if they get away, you lose. Which, oh, I thought we were going to lose, because that one just wouldn't take damage from any of our shots, despite leading into them nicely. The UFOs are definitely worse than the cows. Though, the cows will attack and screw everything over, so that's a thing. Oh, that was a double kill. Did you see that? That was glorious. We shot that cow in the butt. Alright, what's next? Also, why does Hunter stuff always pollute so much? Like, look at that purple smoke. That can't be good for the environment. Despite being a cheetah who you think would want the environment to be fine. Also, who's building all this technology? Like, I really want to know who's who's making all this stuff. The professor isn't in this world. Yeah. Oh, we did it. We got the last one just before he abducted this egg. Thanks. We got Roberto. I don't know any famous Robertos, but it's in a bubble. And I think that does it for this episode. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. We upload daily, whether it be one video or two videos. Um, join the Discord and Patreon links below. You guys can 
get pick which game you want to see next, talk to other gamers, and I'll see you guys next time when we continue Midday Gardens with probably Enchanted Towers and Spooky Swamp if things go well for the next episode. Bye-bye.